Welcome back to the Hot Wheel Room and have I ever got a treat for you guys today. Check out the size of this box. It is full with vintage American muscle. We're going to be checking out all of this stuff. They're all bubble wrap. They're all coming out. Everything's coming out. I did. I couldn't help myself. I had to peek. Now here we have a very rare find. A huge collection of Ertl produced American muscle cars. 164 scale with opening hoods and trunks on every single model. All metal with rubber tires. These were produced between 2000 and 2001. So they're already going on 15, 16 years old as of the date of this video. And I just got an enormous collection of these things from a seller on eBay. I've got multiple color variations, multiple year variations. Each one is a piece of history in itself. The packaging is absolutely unbelievable. I'll take a quick look at this one, for example, this Dodge 71 Dodge Charger. Just a quick idea of the detail on these cars. They have mirrors on them, trunks. Anyways, we're going to look at them all loose here in a second, but first of all, each one has a unique background on it. This one happens to have the original specifications for this car when it was produced. I'm going to have each one shown so you'll be able to pause on it if you want to read more about it. There's some company information, Ertl Collectibles. And uh, the copyright. It's not going to hurt the resale value tremendously to open these up. I really only end up paying about six dollars for each of these cars when you take the amount that I spent on them and divide by how many vehicles I got here so you know if they haven't appreciated in 15 16 years at all then why not open them up and enjoy them and uh, we're, that's what we're gonna do now because this is going to be a long video cracking and examining each car and the cool historical information contained on the back of all these little brochure type poster cards I thought I'd give you a quick overview. For those of you that don't have time to stick around right now to see the whole collection being opened piece by piece, here's a nice smattering of the cars and maybe you'll come back when you do have some time. Got some great big models from the 50s and the 60s. Chevys, Chryslers, Pontiac, Fords, all sorts of cool stuff. Lots of nice variation years as well such as these 58 through 63 Chevy Impalas. You can really see all the body styling that changed over the years. So yeah, stick around if you have time and enjoy the show. Open them up. I have three from my collection originally, and we can take a little look at some of the details on these cars that you're going to see. Opening hoods with very detailed engines in them. Same with the trunks. rubber tires, individual exhaust systems even on these. These are not cast in with the plastic. It's got a separate exhaust, separate leaf springs, trailing arms. Even the drive shaft is not molded in with the rest of the body or the chassis. And neither is the engine and transmission. That is a separate piece. Authentic steely wheels with rubber tires on them. Check out the interior even. The steering wheel, steering wheel and steering horn has been painted. Even the radio is painted silver on the dashboard. All the silver trim. So just to give you an idea, this is the quality that you're seeing on these old Ertl cars. And it goes for every single model. This one here happens to have transparent, four transparent headlights set into the chrome grille. Again, detailed chassis separate exhaust you can see there's the pins holding it on even a separate gas tank so pretty wild pretty wild stuff it's got the spare tire even has the hubcap painted in the trunk license plates unbelievable it's not something I was actively looking for in my collection but at one point I just said hey I need to get more of these Ertl cars and uh, 
what fortune I had the day that I said that because that's when I discovered this lot. In no particular order, I'm going to begin with the 69 Chevy Nova. Check out that original advertising art that's in the packaging behind that car. On the back, we've got 69 Chevy Nova facts and figures. You can pause on that if you want to know a little bit more about this car and its specifications back in the year it was produced. And as I said, I'm going to be very careful about opening these packages so I can keep that little piece. This car cost $4.99 US 16 years ago. And I paid basically the same exact price for it. Hope that that grants me access. There we go. Out, whoa, whoa, oh, uh oh. Out comes all that waste plastic. And what do you get left with? Marvelous. Marvelous car with an opening trunk, opening hood, a mirror on the side, jeweled headlights. Oh, and they're put together with Phillips screws, not rivets. Very accurate tire width. Let's check out this cardboard. It's attached to the base, which I assume you could take you can take that off. And there's the card work without all the glare of the... Uh, ah, that's what I was hoping for. Look at that. Got the original, like, showroom figures on the back. So, that's actually the same information as what you can find on the back of the packaging. But on a nice, authentic-looking piece of advertising history. Take a close look at this car. Get the zoom going here correctly. The mirror is a bit hokey, in my opinion. That's probably why a lot of collectibles have dropped the mirror. It's just too small and rinky dink. And, you know, it's nice that they've added it on there, but it looks like it's prone to probably failure, falling off, whatnot. Now, these cars are a lot like Johnny Lightning and Auto World cars. More like Auto World actually than Johnny Lightning. As far as proportions and accurate scale goes. I'll pull out uh, an Auto World premium line car right here. Is a wagon. And you can see same exact scaling used like same exact 164 scale. Let's zoom this out. The level of detail is basically they've carried it on with Auto World, what used to be in their Ertl American Muscle line, which I don't believe is produced anymore. I'm trying to open the hood there, but that's not necessary. We're looking at Ertl's, or yeah, we're looking at Ertl American Muscle, so just that was just a quick comparison. And that is the first color of the Nova that I have. It's interesting the cardstock they use, how thick it is, the quality of the cardstock, just wonderful. Yet most people would never even see that or know that because it's behind all this plastic. And you've got this nice little American Muscle Chevron grill style thing. It's kind of cool. Made of cardboard. There it is, Nova number two. Same exact piece of uh, display material, but we've got a recolor here. I'm pretty sure there was either two or three recolors for these cars. And uh, sometimes it, between 2000 and 2001, some of these cars were released twice. So you may end up with four colors of a particular model if you're out to collect them all which honestly I think would be very difficult. So I don't I, I can't see lots of these coming up for sale all that often. 
most likely people are going to piece these out one at a time. Nice car. Doesn't that look great? Next car we're opening up here is the 65 Pontiac GTO, or the GOAT. Love this uh, wording here, 1965, it's spelled out. We're gonna look at that car closer once it's out of this packaging first. Just a quick look at the packaging. What does it have on the back? There we go. Great information, you can pause there if you like. Or I'll read it off to you, how about that? And here's the card that came with it. Slightly more information than the back of the package originally had. The wording, select the right engine and transmission for your Pontiac is below the picture of the car. As you can see where my thumb is. The rest of the wording is the same. And these are details on the high performance option engine here and the standard engine there. Look at this car, it's just amazing. This one's got true dual exhaust with twin tips on each piece coming out behind the back wheel. And you can see the rear axle is a separate piece from the chassis as well as the front suspension. Four transparent headlights set in the chrome perfectly. This car appears to have the high performance engine as it does have the three two barrels, the chromed low restriction air cleaner, rocker covers, and oil filler cap. It's even got a radiator hose on it. The alternator pulley belt as well. I have never seen detail like this in a 164 scale vehicle before. Look at that. That's crazy. Forgive me for being so zoomed in here, but it's hard to see all this when you're just looking at it normally. The interior. Let's take a closer look at that interior. Look at the painted shifter knob. Wow, that is fantastic. This 71 Dodge Charger was bought at Kmart 15 years ago for $4.99. This one also has the specifications on the back. You can pause on that if you want to read about it. Interestingly, back in the day, the base price for this car was $3,777, and you could be the proud owner of a 71 Dodge Charger with a 440 cubic inch Magnum V8. Isn't that awesome? There it is. Check out that advertisement, isn't that cool? Parked on the sand, out on the beach. Coolest guy around with a nice looking girl. And interestingly on the back of this card you never would have seen it had you not opened up the package. Here are the dimensions of the vehicle. It's usable luggage capacity. And of course the engines, look at all the engines. You see all the engine options here. They're very small and hard to see, but the only one that was pictured on the back of the blister pack was the 440. Here you can see it came with a 383, uh, a 363, a, 38, a 318 V8, or the 225 cubic inch six cylinder that was standard. All this cool stuff. It's even got the option guy down at the bottom. 
You never would have seen that had you not opened it up. And boy, this is just this is just making my day. Look at this thing. Wow. The detail. I can't, I have to stop talking about the detail. I can't say that for every car. I'm just going to let you look at it. Red line tires. Got a little piece of luggage in the trunk. Expertly crafted. And these things actually roll really well too. Let's see if we can look at that. The fit and finish is great. No wobbly wheels on this car at all. Ah, a little bit of wobble, but considering the quality, uh, it's just amazing. Next car. 65 Chevy Chevelle. A popular size highway performer. This is the SS396 variant. We got a little story on the back here. Let's open that up, take a look at it. Whoa. Go and drop that. There we go. We've shed all the plastic. And there is the car. Let's see what it has on the back of this. More power, uh, yeah, more power options. Extra cost optional engines. Even has the horsepower ratings. Three speed automatic, three speed fully synchronized, four speed, four speed with overdrive, power glide. The stock six cylinder had 120 horsepower and you could get up to 350 horsepower with a turbo fire 327 V8. Wow. Look at the interior on this thing. This one's the best so far. Individual white bucket seats for the front. Let's get this to focus because we need to see this. Every gauge is painted. The shifter knob, the center of the steering wheel. Incredible. Chevrolet right across the front of the hood. Transparent headlights once again. Hmm. What a gorgeous car. Nice authentic hubcaps on it. 1964 Ford Thunderbolt. Total performance cars for 1964. What do we got on the back of this one? You can pause on there if you want to read that. More great artwork. They've obviously got that figured out. And we got a little story on the back. Cool. And here's the car. Nice little button downs painted on the front. That's not what they're called. Each one appears to have a toolbox or something in the back. The trunk. Nice wide opening hood on this one. Look at those. 
see the center the two center headlights are not headlights at all they're actually air inlets for the engine which you can see are ducted right into the carburetor that's definitely a performance feature well they're not headlights you can see there's little grills painted flat black on them this one's got slicks on the rear and regular tires on the front so this one is a performer this is a performance car Let's take a quick peek at the interior on this Ford Thunderbolt again lots of detail Wheat. The next car I've got, we've got two variations of the 63 Ford Galaxy. Packaging is going to be the same on both of these cars. So we'll just look at it once. Here we go 500 Sports Hardtop. Let's crack both of these cars open and check them out a little closer. Plastic and cardboard out of the way. Let's have a look at this artwork first. The liveliest, most carefree cars of the year. Built by Ford. See how they're parked on a giant F? And that's cool. Zoom in here. There's a guy painting the wording Ford, and there's a cat in the middle of the O. Take an overview first. It's like straight out of a sales brochure, isn't it? Beautiful bright red vinyl is one of nine interior trim choices. Let's check that out. See if did we get any bright red vinyl? No, we got some bright beige vinyl, maybe. Oh, this car is just a dream. Look at that. There you go. Hood's got a little spring to it. Ah. Wow. What an interior too. Again, lots of detail. White rimmed steering wheel, silver shift knob, silver accented dashboard. The mirror is up on the fender as it should be. And the blue version. We didn't look at the hood too closely, or the engine, I should say. What have we got in there? Very cool. Love the color on this car. Great examples. Well, I had one Pontiac 62 Catalina before. Now I've got three more. The red one, the blue one, and the black one. Now the packaging is the same in all three of these. And we'll see what's on the back of that card now. Trophy V8 rated at 215 to 348 horsepower, depending on options. All right, go, get that out, there it is, it's even red like the one on the front, or on the cardboard display, really cool, wide track Pontiac, known as the cat, there it is with a red interior, oh, go wide tracking in a cat it says, yep. These ones have black interior. I already took a close look at the first uh, burgundy one that I had, so I'll just do a quick quick look at this red one here and the other two colors. So I'm pretty sure I probably got all four colors now for this car. Interestingly, this one has hubcaps, a nice little variation there. One's got the uh, steely wheels, 
And one's got hubcaps. I wonder if there's any other differences. The license plate is the same on both of them. Alright. What have we got here? This one also has hubcaps, it would appear. And pretty sure we're going to find the same artwork, yeah, on that card. So, nice black Catalina now with dish style hubcaps. Oops, almost dropped it. This is probably my favorite one. I'm a big Pontiac fan. I like these old Pontiacs. They're big, powerful cars. This one in blue is very charming. It's got a blue interior, which is nice. See, all the other ones had black. So it's nice to see a slightly different interior. And this one also has the hubcap. So interestingly, maybe this one was from a different series or a different year. Maybe there are other colors. Who knows? Strange that only one would receive the steel wheels. And what have we here? A 1960 Ford Starliner. It's got one in black, one in silver. Really nice looking car. Lots of chrome. A little blurb about that one on the back. There it is. Look at the roof line on this car. But first, what have we got here? Wonderful new world of power expressed in motion. The 60 Ford Starliner. Oh, it's pretty small. Look at that. Great. Thunderbird 352 Special V8 engine. Gives you power when you need it. Huh, this is the first trunk not to feature what appears to be a toolbox or something in the back. No, uh, no toolbox in this car. Mirrors on both sides of the vehicle. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. That's a nice touch. Very nice touch. Yeah, nice detailed engine in there. Again, the uh, transparent headlights, license plate. Shield wipers. What a beauty. That is a very well crafted piece of 164 scale die cast. And let's get the silver one out here. It's the same story. Both featuring the red interior. See if we can zoom out a bit here. Yeah, nice cars. Very nice cars. They go nicely together. Now we're going to take a look at a variety of years of Chevy Impala, starting with a 1958. Also got the 61 and a 63. A couple paint variations on this one as well. There's the card art. As we can see so far, this one has the specifications on the back. As you can see, five different engine choices from ranging from a 145 horsepower blue flame six cylinder to the 280 horsepower super turbo thrust V8. It's quite the change in power for such a large car. That could really make or break the highway on ramp, I would say. This car matches the artwork. Look at it in one second. Ooh, look at that nice little diagram. No car in Chevrolet's field brings you more deep down newness with big new changes from road to roof. Isn't that cool? And again, the specifications choose from 18 power teams available in every model. 
There's the car. Very nicely detailed engine once again. Big bright orange motor in there. Really nice work on the grill. Ooh, this one has a spare tire in it. That's exciting. Hmm. All right, well, let's see the red one now. This one's got a red interior. The last one had a turquoise interior to match the turquoise paint. Oh, and the hood's falling off. Oh, dear. Well, better get to the bottom of that. Oh, it appears the hood pin is broken on the one side. Just have to put it in the down position. That ah, still functions. Careful at highway speed with that, sir. You only have one hood latch holding that, uh, or one hood hinge. Okay, good to know. And now the 1961 Impala, new trim size, trim new size, a clean new style, and a fine new comfort. Quite a change in the appearance of the car as well, from the 1958 to the 61. SS409, most luxurious Chevrolet. Interiors are available in six beautiful color combinations. Well, this one is a beautiful black. Same work on the back. And same information as on the back of the package. There it is. This one's got two mirrors as well. Big wide front grille. Look at the steering wheel's two tones. Got white side grips with black on either side. The dashboard has looks to be like some a lot of silver painted gauges and whatnot. And, uh, oh yeah, it's a real little rubber tire in the back there. They actually put a real spare in there. Three, three actual tail lights on each side. These are drilled, there's drilled holes right into the car to mount them as you can see from the back. Actual transparent tail light pieces and bumpers. I wonder how many parts are in these things. I know M2 cars are somewhere around 30 to 47 parts in each one. I imagine this one has to be at least that if not quite a bit more. I mean there's six lights there, a mirror on each side, that's eight. Well, eight pieces for each of those wheels plus the axles, that's ten. There you're already up to eighteen so and that's just lights, rear lights. It's got four headlights in the front, there's twenty two parts. Wow, so yeah, it's got to be probably more like 70 parts in this car, I would think, with the separate exhausts, the rear axles, the motor, transmission, gas tanks, all those different interior pieces, the windows, hood, trunk, front grille and bumper. Got to be a lot of parts in those. What a nice car. The last Impala we're opening up is the 63. We did already take a quick look at the one I had loose in my collection from before. It was black with a dark red interior. And this one that I've got now is metallic green with a black interior by the looks of it. Got a colorful specification table on the back of the packaging. Standard engines all the way from a 140 horsepower Turbo Thrift 230 to a whopping 425 horsepower Turbo Thrift 409. That's twice the engine size and three times the power. Wow. So these cars could either be a mundane family cruiser or a wild muscle car, really. I suspect that the model they've given us here is the muscle car variation. Maybe some of you cool cats can tell by just looking at the engine that they put in it. 
first. The packaging. That's a nice little drawing there. Cut clean, clean cut as a jewel, smooth riding as a jet. Hmm. Nifty. And there she is. This is the green one. There's the engine. And the interior, the center console is even painted between the two bucket seats. Trunk's got a spare in it. This one sports the six taillights across the back as well. But these ones appear to be painted on. Unlike the uh, other model that we looked at that had actual transparent pieces put in. The front headlights are still jeweled. Really nice paint job on that car. And there it is with the black one above it. And we're down to the last three or four cars. We've got a couple of 58 Plymouth Furies to look at. These are the cars made famous by the movie Christine. And this one has the paint job just like the movie. Which uh, has been, this car is a popular casting. It's been made by many companies. Including Hot Wheels and Green Light or Auto World. Auto World. I'm not sure if Green Light's made one. I don't think they have, but. Anyways, here's the back for the Belvedere. Star of the Forward Look. Cool. Let's crack those open. I've also just pulled out my Hot Wheels Christine Belvedere. We're going to look at that one just as a cool little comparison since. These are pretty recognizable cars to a lot of us folk. Oh, we got everything going on here. There it is. Start of the forward look. It's got a nice little picture on the back, almost like a stamp or something. And there's no, pa no there's no catching Plymouth now, for this is the greatest Plymouth of them all. You can pause if you want to read the rest of that. Some Plymouth propaganda. That's quite the bumper on this car. Look at all that chrome. Insane. Nice red painted air cleaner on top of that engine. Sunk right down in that massive engine compartment. It's even got the battery right there on the left side of the fender. I'm not sure if those are mirrors on the front or forward spotlights. It's hard to say. They look like they're either on backwards or something's going on. We'll have to look at the next, yeah, they're on backwards. <laughs> we'll look at the next one to compare, but they've just put the mirrors on facing the wrong way. It's a funny little error, I would say. And uh, spare tire in the trunk. Center of the steering wheel, the horn is painted silver. Whoa, a lot of a lot going on there with that front suspension. Not sure if that's popping up or if it's supposed to be that big. I'm curious to see if that'll drag when I'm rolling the car. It does, yeah. The front wheels aren't touching the ground. So there may be a few issues with this particular model, but we'll uh, soon figure that out by comparing it to the red one. And this one's got another issue. It's got its bumpers are jammed right up around its headlights as if it just took a huge jump. So, I think that's going to have to come off. I'm going to have to put that somewhere a little bit more appropriate, down lower where it's supposed to be. Uh, the bumper's upside down. That's what happened. One's got the mirrors on backwards. The other one's got the bumper upside down. So, isn't that funny? You can see the mirrors are pointed the correct direction on this car and the opposite direction on this car. It seems like this. they just didn't get this model as nicely fit and finished as their others for some unknown reason um, yeah because this front piece here is just too low so that when you're rolling the car this one might not drag as bad now that one just barely makes it but this one you can hear it's just dragging along so anyways 
We'll do a little comparison here. It's not really quite fair to the car from the Ertl manufacturers. I've got two error type vehicles here. But uh, we'll have to look at the brown one. That front bumper's just really throwing me. So there you go. There's the Hot Wheels versus the Ertl. Proportions are pretty much the same. The roof on the Hot Wheels is a bit lower. It's got a bit more squat look. Um, pretty much the same looking though. Big thick rubber tires and a metal base on the Hot Wheel. Uh, more detailed but problematic <laughs> base on the Ertl. So anyways, pretty cool. Some of you might be going, oh wait. Didn't you notice? One's a Belvedere and one is just the Plymouth. So these are actually different card arts on them. The cars look so similar. They've got to be, they got to be almost the same car, like a Chrysler Caravan and a Dodge Caravan. They're both basically the same thing. But there's the info for the Belvedere, which to me, I mean, it's hard to completely tell with these errors, but to me, these are the exact same car. So. Uh, yeah, they definitely are the same casting they've used here for both vehicles. Maybe I'm overlooking something, but there you go. Just thought I'd mention that. As it turns out, the bumper is very easy to fix. It's just two pins. Oh, I put it in backwards up again. What the heck's wrong with me? There we go. That looks a little better. That looks a whole lot better. Fixed. You've made it to the last car. Congratulations. The 1957 Chrysler 300C. I've already looked at the red one close up at the beginning of this video. So let's just get right into it. Packaging on the back. More engine information. The Firepower 90 V8. That is a cool name for an engine. Optional 390 horsepower of engine, engine available at extra cost. Hmm. What a nice picture. Look at that grill. Massive. Specifications. 425 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. Hmm. There it is. There's the green one. Look at that. Carburation and air intake system on the top of that engine. Not something. Oh, the seat. Save the best for last, I guess. The seat has <laughs> sideways in the car. It seems to be loose. Oh, I'm going to have to get out the old Phillips screwdriver and finally I've got a reason now I can take one of these things apart right off the bat, so that's going to be fun. Should we do that on film? Nice looking vehicle. No mirrors on this one, interestingly. Some of the models they put mirrors on, some have very accurate mirrors, some have horribly awful big mirrors, but this one has no mirrors. Good suspension system on there. And that wraps up our video for today on good old Ertl collectibles. Stick around for more videos coming out each week, sometimes a few a week. And we'll look at everything from Hot Wheels to racing to even some of these old off-brand cool cars you don't really see all that often. Thanks for tuning in and happy hunting.